Hello, church family. Thank you for taking time to watch this video update. Sundays, so much is happening on Sundays that there's not enough time for me to communicate everything I want to talk to you about. So thank you for watching this video. A few things that I want to talk about, and the first one today is the Southern Baptist Convention. On Sunday, many of you were asking how the convention went. It's really difficult to describe the Southern Baptist Convention, but basically it's a business meeting with 11,000 people in the room. That's how many people were registered as messengers, official messengers to this year's Southern Baptist Convention, which took place in Indianapolis. That made it possible for all, really basically our entire pastoral team to go. Pastor Greg and Pastor John Bright were not able to attend, but the rest of us were there. Other folks from our church family were there. And it was a, a wonderful way for us to connect with one another uh, some other acquaintances that we have uh, in the Southern Baptist Convention, and to accomplish business. Now, you can only imagine what a business meeting with 11,000 people in the room who want to be heard, want to be able to talk about things that are near and dear to their heart, want to speak to the issues that are being discussed, how all of that has to happen. It is a crash course in Robert's Rules of Order. And if you think about it, Robert's Rules of Order are really necessary if you have business that you're conducting with 11,000 people who can vote. Um, I think overall, things went really, really well. There was nothing uh, upsetting that took place, although the Southern Baptist Convention is something that the press covers. And like anything that the media covers, there's probably slants and biases. So if you have any questions about something you read or heard that took place at the convention, please hear from me. There's nothing for us to be upset about, but our doors are wide open. You can come and ask whatever questions you might have so that we would be able to answer whatever questions you might have about the Southern Baptist Convention. A lot is happening around the world that God is doing. One of the great things that took place at the convention was the commissioning of new missionaries to go overseas. Always a moving time. And so great worship, great preaching. The information that we were able to access in the exhibit hall was wonderful. Lots of ministry and mission opportunities and resource kind of information. Very, very helpful. So thank you for helping us as a pastoral team make uh, an appearance and take advantage of the Southern Baptist Convention being just in Indianapolis this year. I'm really excited about an event that's coming up in just a few more weeks. We're calling it the Church Family Picnic, and it's going to take place on Wednesday evening, July the 3rd. When I was growing up, and maybe you have a memory about this too if you grew up in the church, we used to have in the summertime what we called Sunday school picnics. And if you grew up with that, you know what they are. It's a time where your church family can get together, just enjoy uh, time together playing games, organize games for everybody in your family, um, good food. We're going to be providing a barbecued pulled pork sandwiches and hot dogs and other food and, and beverages. Um, so just come and enjoy a great evening of fellowship together. That's going to be July the 3rd, Wednesday night. Great way to kick off 4th of July celebrations this year. We can do that as a church family. So even if you're not going to uh, participate in the burlap sack race, uh, bring a lawn chair and you can enjoy watching it take place in front of you. So that's Wednesday night. I think things start at 6 p.m. Plan on being here. It'll be a great time together. Connected with fellowship. Um, that's one of the DNA characteristics of our church family. I think we care about one another. We enjoy being together. A lot of the ministry that takes place at our church revolves around food, of course. I think that's biblical. I think if you study the New Testament, the early church did a lot with food in terms of ministry. Over the years, we have had a fellowship committee that we elected members to every year. We don't have that committee functioning, but we have a team of folks who do fellowship and over the years, many of those who have faithfully served in putting together carry-in dinners and other church events that surround food and ordering supplies and doing all of those things, um, many of those people are now with the Lord. Some have had circumstances change and they're not as able to be active like they used to be. One of the main things that we do in this fellowship category 
is when someone experiences the loss of a loved one and we do a funeral dinner for the family after the funeral. If you've ever had a funeral dinner served to you after a, a very stressful couple days of saying goodbye to a loved one and then organizing the services, you know how important those funeral meals are. We need some more volunteers to help make food, prepare food, be here at the church in order to serve the families when they're here. If that's the kind of ministry in general, fellowship kind of ministry that you feel the Lord has gifted you for, would you please come and talk to me? I'll connect you with the others who are involved doing that, and you can be part of the fellowship ministry and the fellowship team that we have here at church, because so much is happening. Summertime, a lot is happening. Um, we're doing the facility refresh, and you can see all around the church the evidences of that. We're in the middle of a bathroom, major bathroom remodel right now. Hopefully soon those restrooms will be online again and usable. Uh, we'll be recarpeting in the main foyer space, and other things are happening as well. But last month, we did um, have a special business meeting where we voted unanimously to contract with McKnight Group to do a feasibility study to consider what we might uh, have facing us for a building expansion. And if the Lord leads us in that direction, what, what are the options? What are the realities that are out there? So we've begun a process of a feasibility study with McKnight Group. And some of you have been asking how that's coming. So I want you to know we're in the process. They've given us a number of documents that we need to fill out that will provide construction details and questions about drawings. And uh, this particular document is 16 pages long, and it breaks down all of the ministries of the church and needs very specific data gathering. So that's a lot of work on our part. Um, and yet we're working on that so that that work can progress over the next couple months. We're anticipating that probably in the September time frame, we'll have another special business meeting where we'll be able to present to you the results of that feasibility study and then prayerfully consider what the next steps might be that the Lord would have us to take in terms of building expansion. In the meantime, between now and then, please be praying because there's going to be a series of meetings with the pastoral team and with ministry leaders and the McKnight group in order to work through and iterate through uh, potential possibilities as a result of that study. So be praying about all of that, if you will, please, and I appreciate that, your prayers. Summertime is so busy. Normally, 4th of July kind of marks the middle of summer, and I hate to think that things are going by so quickly already, but summertime is also a great time for ministry to take place. We've got a number of our folks that are heading out on mission trips. Our medical missions team is heading to Costa Rica soon. We've got several on the field now, various places in the world that are serving on short-term mission trips. We've got a number of our families that are transitioning, especially our military folks who are being reassigned to new locations. And so a lot of ministry is taking place in our church body, helping people through those transitions. Summertime is also a great time when a lot of people who are searching for a church home will visit our church. And so be on the lookout for those who might be visiting and give them a Dayton Avenue welcome and encourage them to return and make Dayton Avenue their church home. I am so glad that you're part of our church family as well. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please know we love you, we're praying for you, and we're here for you. Don't hesitate to call in any of us pastors. We would love to spend time with you, pray with you, talk with you, and just be with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.